So one thing I want you to you know think about is that if I want to make this uh, solar cell, which is uh, optimized for this uh, thermophotovoltaic conversion, what should be the band gap of that cell? You know, should I use silicon cell? Should I use gallium arsenide cell? Or, you know, what what kind of cell should I use to achieve this uh, uh, achieve this thermophotovoltaic conversion? Should it just be a silicon cell? Or should it be some other material? Direct band gap material, okay, that's fine. But which, what should be the band gap? Ben gave, you know, uh, he skipped a few steps and gave the answer directly. But let me, you know, let me take a baby step and explain an answer. So whenever I'm designing a solar cell, right, where sh usually where do I design my, uh, where, where do I place my band gap? I place my band gap so that it has a wavelength which corresponds to the maximum of the spectrum I'm trying to absorb, right? So when I'm, when I'm absorbing the energy from the sun, my temperature of the sun is close to 6,000 Kelvin. So I design my materials such that you know they have uh, their uh, cutoff wavelength or their band gap, which corresponds to this energy. And this corresponds to you know energy of uh, silicon, gallium arsenide, right? Which have a band gap uh, of say 1 eV, 1.4 eV in that range. But now, what am what am I trying to optimize? To I'm trying to optimize, or trying to I'm trying to absorb from a black body, which is at a much lower temperature, right? So I'm trying to uh, essentially absorb the spectrum from a black body, which is uh, close to you know somewhere over here. So its peak would lie at a much longer wavelength, right? Or it would essentially correspond to a much lower energy, and this peak essentially for this particular wave, for this particular temperature, it corresponds to a wavelength of around 2 micron, right? Which is equivalent to having a band gap of uh, around 0.6 eV. So I need a material with a much lower band gap if I want to make uh, uh, a solar cell which is optimized for this uh, thermophotovoltaic conversion, right? So Ben gave the answer to us uh, directly, right? So what materials have this particular uh, band gap and are uh, as Yishang said, it should be direct band gap as well. What Ben so told was germanium, which is a band gap of uh, 0 0.67, but it's not direct. Ben, do you have another option? Or? Lead sulfide, actually, even I don't know what's the band gap. Okay. So germanium is one option. Another option is you know things like gallium antimonide, indium gallium arsenide. These all have wavelength which can you know it's around 0.7 eV range. So these are the materials you need to make your cell on if you want to achieve a good thermophotovoltaic conversion. Right? Similarly, we have essentially changed. We have now a new sun, which is a less hot sun, and so we need a new material, which is a lower band gap material. Okay. So these cells are, you know, typically made out of these, uh, uh, made out of either gallium antimonide or germanium, and uh, they usually have a very good uh, back reflector as well. So remember, essentially, you have, you'll get a spectrum, which is now cut off. So essentially, what my filter will do is essentially erase out this part of the spectrum. So the the higher uh, energy photon won't come on it. Right, but there will be a large tail of uh, low energy or these red photons, which will essentially get, you know, they will not get absorbed in the material either, and they will be reflected back again to the absorber. So there needs to be a good reflector at the back, right? So you, you design the system so that it can reflect all which is it's not absorbing back to the absorber. So the absorber absorbs it back and then emits it back, 
and you'll essentially try to tune your absorption to this very low range, right? And that's the reason why you get such a high efficiency, because you are essentially limiting the spectrum that you're absorbing, right? So usually you have a very high, uh, very large spread in terms of your spectrum. Whatever is, uh, and your band gap is somewhere in between. So whatever is above the band gap, you absorb it at a very low efficiency because you lose all that energy. And what is below the band gap, you again don't absorb as well. So what you're doing right now is essentially you're restricting your absorption to this very small range by using this uh, by using this spectrically selective element. And that's why you're getting this very high efficiency. Right? If you try to absorb the whole spectrum, you get a very low efficiency. So the idea is to split it into a very no, narrow band, and you can absorb it uh, very efficiently. Okay. So now the question I had for you was, you remember we talked about uh, silicon nitride as an anti-reflective coating. You guys did a, you guys did a, a problem set uh, question where you tried to, you know, uh, simulation question where you tried to put a silicon nitride coating. Should I use the same coating here? Would silicon nitride made a, make a good coating for this cell? Remember your problem set where you optimize your silicon, right? For which problem was this? Uh, problem set three, the simulation problem where you optimize your silicon nitride thickness. Should I do the same thing? Okay. So it's, a, it's not broader than the sun, but, but there's something else which is different, right? So when think about you know anti-reflective coating, you want to you choose one particular thickness of it, right? Such that what is the criteria you had on that thickness? It should correspond to the peak of your solar spectrum, right? I mean lambda by four should be equal to the peak you want to uh, you want essentially your anti-reflection at, right? So that peak was corresponding to what previously? Peak of the solar solar spectrum, right? So now what have I done over here? I've essentially, you know, I've chosen a sun. I've essentially, for this problem, I have a much cooler sun, right? I mean, right? Instead of having a 6,000 Kelvin black body, I have a 2,500 Kelvin black body, right? So I'll need to re-optimize my anti-reflection coating so that it corresponds to uh, a minimum which corresponds to a wavelength which is now essentially uh, lambda by four should be instead of being uh, you know instead of being 550 nanometer, I'll essentially need a much longer wavelength over here, right? Because I have a much cooler sun. So I have to redesign this whole cell. See, I'm already using different materials. I have to use different anti-reflective coating as well. So this cell it typically uses, you know, these other magnesium fluoride, zinc sulfide kind of anti-reflective coating, which essentially try to minimize the reflection at a much larger wavelength, at wavelengths of uh, micron level range, because essentially I have a much cooler sun over here which has the maxima at uh, two micron, not at 550 nanometer, right? So everything needs to be redesigned, right? Because I've, if you essentially, you know, go to another planet, so, you know, try to think of it, right? If you take the sun from, uh, if you take the solar panels from Earth 
and you go to a different uh, planetary system which has a different kind of a sun, they won't be very efficient. Right? So if you're planning a space mission to you know, outside the solar system, you'll you know, keep that in mind that the cells that you take from Earth might not work, especially if you have a new sun. Yeah. If you? Sorry? So diffused is, is kind of, uh, uh, it's, it's said diffused because, you know, you can think of it like a dim cell, because it's, it's not like a solar cell. I mean, it's not the same sun. It's a, it's a less hotter sun. So people call it like a diffused sun. It just, you know, like uh, one way to think about it, it's like a red sun instead of being a yellow sun. Hmm. Uh, sorry? Yeah. The bottom layer doesn't have to be diffused, it has to be a substrate. So, since you're using gallium antimony over here, it has a very high absorption coefficient. So, essentially, uh, you're talking about why do I use this layer over here? Is that what you're talking about? Well, diffuse is typically something you form by diffusion. So you implant something and you anneal it, and that's a diffuse junction. Right? So essentially, if, if you think of your cell, right, you have, uh, uh, say, a PSC cell, right? So these are diffuse junctions because I essentially uh, cover it with a layer which has implants, then diffuse it from there to form these junctions. So that's what that means. Actually, no, it might, for this layer, it just means just diffuse from like formed by a diffusion. 